my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you how we can use our jelly tissue papers in our art journal. If you followed along last week, I showed you how to make these papers. And this week I wanted to show you how you can actually incorporate these into your projects and how they can create the most unique layers in your art journal. So before we even look to add the tissue paper, we want to think about some of the images we may want to have peeking through beneath the tissue paper. So with tissue paper, the areas of the paint will be solid, but the areas with the white tissue paper are going to be clear. And that's where some of the really unique properties of the tissue paper really come in handy when you're doing collage. So I want to start by adding some writing just to my background. It could be doodles, it could be writing, it could really be anything. I'm just going to put in just some some words. I'm not even making them all that legible really. And you can even put some, some journaling or anything else. I'm going to write love a bunch of times. And I'm really not worrying about having really great cursive with this. And if you do want some of this to be seen through, you could put something quite bold with a much thicker pen. Like for example, this one here, if I really wanted to love to show through, that's going to show through a lot more than these lighter scribbles. Something you really want to consider when putting your writing in the background. Please make sure you're adding a permanent pen when you're doing your writing. Otherwise you are going to end up with a little bit of a mess when you look to collage on top. And if you don't like having your own writing on something like this, you can always add some pages from a book or a dictionary. I've had this dictionary that I got from the secondhand store for ages, and I just keep using a few pages here and there just to add to my art journal pages. And you can just take a few pieces, they don't even have to be large pieces, and just add them in to your page. So in this case, I'm going to be adding some matte medium onto the page and just adhering these little strips of dictionary. And you can see that in some areas my permanent pen hasn't completely dried. Some of them, unless you let them sit for a little bit, you might get a little bit of smudging, but it just depends if you care about that or not. So now that we've let this dry, the next thing you want to do is decide on the tissue paper you want. I have both blue and white tissue paper. The white tissue paper areas will be completely clear once adhered, but this one here is going to be I'll have that little bit of a blue tint just because of the fact that we printed on blue tissue paper. So this is where you could add it in sections or you could just add an entire sheet of tissue paper onto your page. In this case, I'm putting a nice thick layer of matte medium because tissue paper is very thin. You're not trying to add any medium to the back of the tissue paper. You just want to lay it down on your surface very gently. Again, you may want to rub a little bit, but rub very gently just to make sure that you don't damage it. And then very gently come across the top and work in small areas. Again, if you pull really hard and you don't have a lot of medium on your brush, it's going to rip. But if you work slowly and depending on the quality of tissue paper, this is easier or a little less easy to do. So you have to be a little bit patient when applying it just to make sure that you end up the really nice adhesion, but at the same time not ripping the paper. And you want to do the same thing with the other side. And if you wanted more of your text to be seen through, I would say just use the white tissue paper. But I wanted it to be very subtle, which is why I was okay just sticking with the blue tissue paper. You just want to make sure that you have a really good amount of matte medium just along that crease in there, just to make sure that you don't have any weird bubbles or bumps. And by working out like this, this also prevents you from having quite as much wrinkling with your tissue paper. You'll always have some. And you might find that once this dries, it does curl up on the edges and you can always just add a little bit more to those edges just to adhere it down. And so once the blue is fully dry, you can see that you can see some of the text through, you can see some of the writing through in areas, but then you can also choose to add more layers. I'm going to use a little bit of Japanese paper. And I'm also going to be adding another piece of jelly printing. And again, all those white areas are going to go away once I add my matte medium. And these are all light enough that you can use matte medium. Usually if you're using regular jelly prints, I would suggest using a regular gel medium. But in the case of this, I would say matte medium is sufficient just because we're looking at lightweight things that we're adding to our surface. 
I'm just adding in my little mats in behind just to protect the surface. So try not to get too much on my other projects. No one really likes to have all your projects sticking together in your art journal. So just adding those down and then just adding another layer of matte medium over top. Because the weave of this Japanese paper, it's going to go on a little bit more opaque than the tissue paper. And just keep on watching because later on I'm gonna show you different ways you can alter that Japanese paper in this project. And I love these little bits that were from folding the tissue paper that I showed you in last week's project. And you can see that really those white areas, you can see them a little bit, but they're not really obvious. I'm going to add another section over here. And then we just want to let this dry and then we can trim the edges as well. And one of the last things I wanted to do with this was to add some fiber paste. So fiber paste is basically like paper fibers in a paste. And what I'm going to do is add it onto my project. And I want to stay away from that middle area here because I do want to be able to close my book properly. And that extra thickness is going to make it a little bit challenging to do so. This is one of my favorite stencils. It's a sunflower stencil. I've had it quite a while, but I find that just the imagery works so well on so many projects. You want to add enough paste where it glides over the surface and doesn't catch the stencil, but not so much that it's globby on top. And I like to add it in sections. I find like I have a little bit more control. If you're struggling with using a palette knife, get a smaller palette knife. It makes it a little bit easier. I have a variety of sizes and I use large palette knives, but I've been doing this type of stuff for a while, so it is kind of nice to have a large one on certain types of projects. And now I'm going to do another one over here just because why not? I love my sunflowers, so I'm going to add this in as well. Before you set this to dry, just clean up any edges that might be over. That will dry hard. You can cut it later on, but I like getting rid of it before letting it dry. So now our fiber paste is dried. I could have colored it before I added it, but I really like the look of adding watercolor paints on top of fiber paste. And you'll notice that these areas here that we added in that Japanese paper now show a little bit white on the background. So what I would like to do is adjust the color on those white bits a little bit. So you can see by just adding a little bit of paint on some of those areas, it can just bring in a little bit more texture and you can actually see a little bit more of the variation in that tissue paper. And you can also pull a little bit of that watercolor over on top of the other tissue paper if you wanna to try to blend things a little bit more. But I really like the look of that because I really feel like I like having that little bit of the white showing up on top with a little bit of that blue instead of it's looking really white on white. So I want to start adding some color to my flowers. So I'm going to start with a little bit of this rose color. Adding in a little bit of the cad red light. Just going to add in a little bit more of that light rose color. Come back in with a little bit more of that red. I don't want it to be too pink. I want to have it more towards red so I might be able to darken this with some other colors as well. So I'm pretty happy with that color. Just going to add a little bit more water there just so it's not quite as intense going on the surface. So there's a few different ways you could add color to this. In this case you can just add the color straight on it like so. It's a very vivid color and a very vivid result. The other option is you add a little bit at the bottom here. You can see as I'm adding it, it's going to get a bit lighter as I'm going, just because there's less of the pigment on my brush. Then it can come in, clean off my brush, and come in just with some clear water. And that gives it a lot more of that subtle look. Another way you could go and do this is just add a little bit of the water straight onto... The water's gotten a little dirty, but you can add water straight onto the flower. It gives you a place where you can just drop in color and do more of a wet on wet technique on top of that fiber paste. So there's more than one way you can do it. It just depends on what type of effect you're looking for and how deep of a color you want.
And if you want to add a little bit more deep color or a little bit more vibrant color, you can bring in a lot more of a brighter red and just allow it to seep into some of these spots. I'm using a thicker brush. I don't mind doing that, but if you find this a little bit challenging, just use a thinner brush than what I'm using. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, if you could just boop that like button. That's a really great way of helping other people see this video and just thank you so much for your support. flower centers and bringing in some lemon yellow, a little bit of this new gamboge, and a little bit of the burnt sienna. I'm just going to lighten this color a little bit. I, went, I put it on pretty solidly because the idea is that you want to be able to try to have a little bit of variation in even just your seeds. And what's nice about the fiber paste is because it is elevated, you can generally get the little bits that you want on those center flowers without getting much on the background. Because this watercolor is going to dry lighter where it's going to look nice and bright on top of that white fiber paste. But if you do get a little bit on your background, it's not going to be that noticeable. Then I can come in with a little bit of the new gamboge and spots. And again, with that slightly deeper color, that just adds a little bit of variation to your surface. And then I'm going to come in with some burnt sienna. I'm actually mixing the burnt sienna with the new gamboge, and that just gives it a slightly different color hue that will tie in a little bit better. Again, I'm not being very particular about where I'm putting it. I'm just adding touches of places of it in the high points. And now that I've done the one sunflower, I'm basically doing the second one the exact same way. The thought I had behind this particular page, besides having a lot of fun with tissue paper, was that with summer being such a busy time for all of us, uh, how do we manage self-care during the summer months? It's so easy to be so busy with so many things, and sometimes if we don't make it a priority, our personal creative self-care can kind of go out the window. Maybe instead of expecting a lot from ourselves over the summer, maybe it's just one idea or one project. It's setting a small goal of what we'd like to try this summer. Uh, maybe you want to learn something new. Maybe you want to do a project that you've wanted to do for the last few months and haven't tried it yet. It can be just taking time to do something creative in your day. I know one of my personal goals is to take time to develop my art skills by spending time outside. And part of that is our summers here are so short. It's trying to enjoy nature and the good weather as much as I can. And I'm hoping in the following weeks I'm going to be able to share with you a few videos that are shot outside and how I use creativity and how I'd manage creativity in the outside environment. And so part of that was creating these really small art journals. I've realized how much I love the huge pages, but they're not really conducive for doing projects quickly. I find that often a project that will take me 20 minutes, half an hour on a small book will take me two to three hours on a large book. And so sometimes when my time is limited, I really wanted to get those ideas down quickly. So by working small and just coming up with little ideas, this is also a great way that you can practice new techniques. And especially if you're new to art journaling, this is a great way of just getting your toes into art journaling without feeling overwhelmed. So what are you going to set as a goal this summer? And maybe some of it is just giving yourself a chance to try creating. And whatever that goal is, I would love for you to share it with me and leave your comment in the comments below because I would love to start a conversation with you about how maybe I can help you or something you might want to learn to be able to help with your creative journaling practice this summer. So to finish off this page, I added my summer goal to paint and create out in nature. And that's going to be my goal over the next couple months as the weather is good and I'm hoping to get outside and be able to share a little bit more of some outside creativity with you. So I hope you've enjoyed this process as we've been walking through how to collage with those tissue paper jelly prints. And I hope that adding the fiber paste and adding watercolor to it, those techniques, maybe they're new to you. I hope that you've been able to get a lot out of this video. And if you have enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe, 
subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you have any questions about what I've shared today or have any comments on this project, please leave a comment below. I love talking with you all and I love being able to talk about art and any questions that you might have. And if you're interested in seeing the supply list for today's video, you can find it below. Uh, that does include affiliate links, which means that anytime you purchase, I get a small commission at no cost to you. And that's just a way that you can support this channel. And just so you know, all the supplies that I use today, I purchased on my own. These are my favorite things I like to use. I've made a point to only recommend products that I truly love. And if you've enjoyed this video, uh, check out this video next. It's one of my tissue paper videos where I use a collage in the art journal and this one I know people have really enjoyed and made a lot of comments about how they really like the technique. So I hope you have a really great week that you take some time for some personal self-care and I will see you next time.